This video demonstrates using a P9813 based LED strip driver module and an Arduino to control a non-addressable 12 volt DC 5050 RGB LED light strip. Unlike LED strips that utilize individually addressable WS2812B LEDs and are powered by 5 volts DC, the significantly less expensive uh, 5 meter strip can be purchased online for less than 20 bucks. Uh, Non-addressable strips require a 12 volt power supply and are not easily controlled by an Arduino. Fortunately for the Arduino community, inexpensive driver modules are available that make controlling a 12 volt RGB LED light strip easy. Now RGB LED light strips have a variety of uses, anything from custom lighting and modded PCs to holiday decorations to indirect lighting for the home. Uh, using an Arduino to control these strips significantly expands their utility, and besides, it's fun. Now, the driver control module used for this project was purchased online for less than $7 US. Connections on the module include a pair of terminal blocks that allow connection to 12 volts that are necessary to power the LED strip four terminal blocks on the opposite edge to connect to the 12 volt red, green, and blue contacts on an LED strip. Two sets of four control pins line the edges of the two remaining sides of the module, input on one side for connection to the Arduino, and outputs on the other side that can be used to connect multiple modules. Now, the output pins permit multiple modules and strips to be cascaded without requiring any additional connections to the Arduino. Now a surface mounted DMS Microelectronics P9813 driver chip on the module provides the interface that makes it all work. A simple Android app built using MIT's App Inventor controls the strip via Bluetooth with the use of a serially interfaced Bluetooth module. A full 5 meter LED strip draws around 6 amps, which is 72 watts at 12 volts, so I utilized an old PC power supply to provide the needed power to the strip. One of the beauties of the Arduino is its simplicity, and this project is no exception. As you can see, the connections are fairly simple. You've got the connections necessary to connect the Bluetooth module power and ground, plus transmit and receive. The two-wire interface to the strip controller module, along with its power and ground. The 12 volts in to power the strip and then the four connections out to the strip. The Bluetooth module itself is powered by 3.3 volts. The strip module by 5 volts. So I'm utilizing two different voltages that are output by the Arduino, one for the Bluetooth and one for the strip. First up, we're going to talk about the Arduino code. This code handles the commands that have been transmitted by the Android app and uses them to control the strip. A link to the Android app has been provided here in the source code. There's two libraries used by the program, one of them being the one used for the module to control the strip, the other being a software serial library used to communicate with the Bluetooth module. And I do want to include a special shout out to Paul Ruinelli who provided some handy code through his website. Uh, the link is here in the source code for translating from HSV to RGB. Saved me a lot of time and I really would encourage you to check it out if you have similar needs. Several structures defined here to handle the translation from HSV to RGB. Uh, the number of LEDs uh, definition here is used by the strip controlling module. Pins 4 and 5 used to communicate with the module and although it's not mentioned here, 8 and 9, pins 8 and 9 are used with, by software serial. So we've defined those two objects. There's a handful of variables to find for controlling uh, the program itself storing the RGB and HSV colors. Now the setup section of the program initiates those two objects. 
And then the main loop of the program is mainly concerned with checking to see if any commands have come in via Bluetooth. And if they have, then making the appropriate changes to the strip. The commands that the program understands are breathe, blink, on, off, random, and color. The color command having a subset of RGB or HSV depending on which mode the Android app is set to and then pulling that red, green, blue or HSV data out and storing it in an array. The section down here then handles executing each of those commands. If the mode is zero, sets the color to black, turns the strip off. If it's one, which is the breathe mode, it loops between increasing the HSV value to its max and then to the minimum uh, repeatedly looping based on the cycle time which is also transmitted as part of the command. If it's a two which is the blink mode it alternates between turning the strip on and turning the strip off uh, delaying the blink time which is also transmitted from the Android app. And if it's three which is just on it turns the strip on based on the colors that were set from the color transmission again from the Android app. That's really all there is to it. It just loops through that over and over and over again making the appropriate changes. Alright now on to the Android code. Now the code on the Android side as I mentioned is developed using MIT's App Inventor 2 through the browser. This is a graphical representation of the layout of the app itself although I've provided some screenshots that actually make it a little easier to understand than this does. When you first start the app you're presented with a screen that looks something like this. A button to connect via Bluetooth, buttons to choose between choosing a color or having a color chosen randomly, uh, HSV or RGB depending on which of these two modes is chosen with this button and then the breathe blink on or off and a slider for the cycle time for each breathe or blink. Middle screen here represents the selection menu that comes up when you connect to the Bluetooth device. You can see how this all works in action in the demonstration that will follow. Now the actual code is in the App Inventor 2's drag and drop program format. As you can see there are some global variable declarations here at the beginning and I've kind of broken the blocks of code up into their purpose. This first section with functions related to actually starting the program alerting you if Bluetooth is not enabled on the Android device the setting of various variables uh, before connection, the error messages that are displayed if an error does occur, and after a Bluetooth device is chosen and it's connected, what it sends to the device as well as setting a few more variables, and what to do if the disconnect button is pressed. The disconnect button you can see here down at the bottom only appears if you're connected. Here before you're connected you don't see the disconnect button. This next section has to do with that first uppermost button, the color selection button. When the button is pressed it calls this color mode function and switches between uh, RGB or HSV modes and changes the value or the limits on the sliders correspondingly and turns on and off uh, the table if random is chosen rather than color. The send mode function after the options are chosen sends that via ASCII to the Arduino. This section has to do with the RGB sliders, these three here, or HSV depending on what mode you're in. When the position of any one of those sliders is changed, it updates the text to the side 
of the slider that appears here and calls the color mode function which sends that data out over Bluetooth to the Arduino. Now this next button down is the one that selects between RGB and HSV. Depending on which one is chosen, it calls the function that changes the text and sets the limits on the on the screen. This DD mode, DD is for drop down. You see there's breathe, blink, on and off depending on what mode is chosen. Sets various program variables and limits on sliders. Sets the values that are displayed. Now if the cycle time slider is moved, this function sets the numerical value that displays next to it depending on whether it's breathe or blink and then sends out that updated information via Bluetooth to the Arduino and the timer function handles looking for input there is a function in the Arduino code that actually asks for updated information from the Android app when it's in the blink or the breathe modes so that when the sliders are changed that in updated information can get sent out and received by the Arduino. Now I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about how the drag and drop programming language works and how to develop apps using App Inventor. I cover that in a little more detail in another video uh, using App Inventor 2 and Android uh, to control the Arduino. I would recommend you check that video out and you may find it of value in developing your own applications. Alright, here we have a demonstration of the app's capability of controlling the RGB strip via the module. First thing we need to do is connect it to the Arduino via Bluetooth. We've established that connection. I've got it off by default, but if I turn it on, we've got a, the ability to control the strip both with hue, saturation, and value as well as switching it over and controlling the strip via RGB being able to set the amount of each individual color that way as well. So in addition to be able to control that in real time again via RGB or HSV I can also put it in a mode where it will breathe that's blink I apologize and I can set the blink rate by moving the slider up and down that's a longer time between each blink moving the slider this way will increase the blink rate I can also put it in a breathe mode where it will fade slowly in and out again I can move the slider and adjust that the speed at which it breathes and at the same time even still have the ability to switch it over to red green and blue there's also a random color mode as well switch it over to random and each time it will switch color randomly Switch it back over here to blink. Lower that blink rate down. You see each time it's randomly choosing a different color. So basically the... Uh, so what the application is doing is sending commands over Bluetooth to the Arduino which it then uses to control the RGB strip. 
As always, I hope this video helped you learn a new way you can use your Arduino, and demonstrated how easy it is to combine an Arduino and other hardware to make something unique and wonderful. Please like and subscribe if you'd like to see more similar videos from me featuring the incredible ways you can utilize your Arduino.